Welcome to Free Med Ed in our first course in medical microbiology. Microbiology is a study of, well, microbes. It is a required course in many biological based undergraduate degrees. Medical microbiology focuses on the specific microbes and characteristics that are vital for a physician to understand in order to diagnose and treat patients. This is the foundational material that is necessary for greater understanding as an infectious disease specialist, but also as a general practitioner. We hope this material will be of interest to those outside of the medical practice as well. Before we start, I recommend that every learner watching these videos download the PubMed Genius extension for your web browser. This will allow you to quickly look up peer-reviewed scientific journals on any topic discussed in this or other medical and scientific educational material. You may get lucky sometimes with a wiki or Google search, but this little extension will help make sure that you receive the most up-to-date and relevant material. If your work, school, institute, or local library has a subscription to UpToDate, this is a highly recommended source used by most medical providers as it provides succinct, regularly updated, systemic reviews of many topics. However, this is beyond the scope of this course, so if you don't have access, don't worry about it. When discussing medical micro, there are some questions we should ask. Why do we care? What do you do if your family member or patient shows certain symptoms? When is it time to worry, or when can we wait and let the body run its course? How do we know what antibiotics to give and when? What should we consider with systemic diseases versus a local infection? Hopefully some of these will be clarified throughout the lecture series. The five animal kingdoms include the Monera, or prokaryotes, and eukaryotic species, including protists, fungi, plants, and animal. In this course, we will begin by discussing the bacterial species that cause disease, which fall under the prokaryote genre. These organisms are different from our cells in that they are unicellular and do not contain a nucleus, among other differences. Some of these unicellular organisms also have unique and distinguishing features that assist in their navigation and survival. Gram staining is a common way to divide bacteria into broad categories for easy classification. Gram-positive cells have a different cell wall acid that allows a dye to stain their cell wall, while gram-negative have different components to their cell wall and require different staining techniques. The pilus is Latin for hair, and promiscuous bugs use these, as well as other forms of genetic rearrangement, to become resistant to antibiotics. They also have to worry about bacterial phages and host immune cells. This is why some have evolved flagella to help them move quickly and evade other cells. We'll also discuss the importance of LPS and other bacterial proteins in the respective modules. Here we can see a culture and sensitivity test. This is one method to test antibiotic resistance. The agar plate is first coated with bacteria, let to spread in a heated enclosure for several hours to several days, and then assessed for sensitivity to the antibiotics placed on the plate. The further the clearing around the antibiotic tablet, the better indication that it is killing the bacteria. Well, this was a quick tutorial on what to expect in the following course lectures. Keep an eye out for our soon-to-be-released course as well, which will include practice quizzes, games, and other fun ways to better incorporate the material and to increase long-term retention. We'll also post extra recommended learning materials for those that wish to attain a deeper understanding of these materials. Please sign up for our newsletter at freemeded.org and keep in touch via social media for future releases. In the next video, we will continue with our bacteriology discussion exploring gram-positive bacteria that are shaped like circles, called caucus-shaped. In future tiers within this first module, we'll also discuss diseases, laboratory tests, and treatments in much greater detail.